Good evening, Burlington. Uh, my name is Russ Ellick. I'm the Communication Specialist at Burlington School District, and I'm pleased to be joined here today by Superintendent Yao Obang. Yao, thanks oh. for coming on the show. Thank you, Russ. Happy to be here. So we're going to talk a little bit today about um, you are actually entering your fifth year as superintendent of Burlington Schools. And I was wondering if you would like to take a moment to reflect on what that time has been like. What are some of the things that, that you didn't realize when you took the job? What are some of the things that you've been working on for the last four years? And, and just some general reflections of that time. Wow. Oh, great question, Russ. If I, could, if I could project forward and look back and think four years back and think what would I change, what would I do differently, there would be a lot that I would. But well, there are some really good things. And, you know, this year um, we do annually a uh, year in review, which you'll get a chance to see later on today. And after doing that this year, I kind of reflecting, wow, I'm entering my fifth year. And I said, wow, you know, time has flown by. You know, each year there's been a different challenge and some great successes. To look back, and I remember coming in to Burlington with great excitement. I was really excited to come to Burlington. I'm still excited to be in Burlington. And um, when I had gotten a picture of what, what some of the challenges were, but you never really know until you actually get into the, to the job or you get into the role. And I recall that I know we had, a, we had a huge deficit that we were struggling with in terms of the community, and there were some financial uh, instabilities. Uh, to the extent that uh, voters voted down the budget because of lack of confidence around um, the district. There were racial tensions uh, between staff. There's some documented uh, information around that between staff and students and students and students and, and even board members. Um, so it, it, was, it was quite um, uh, challenging in, in those times. And uh, be, in the backdrop of all this was, the, um, was collective agreements. And bargaining. We have eight bargaining units, and I don't think there's another district, at least not in the state or other states that I know of, that have eight units. But we are negotiating all those units at the same time. And at that point, when I entered, we were stalled already. So you walk in, and we have stalled, um, you know, negotiations. So that sets a certain type of climate or tone for mm -hmm. your staff. No one feels good about being in that situation. And you know, from the student perspective, there were some challenges around um, suspensions. Uh, we had high suspensions, students were missing instructional time, and particularly uh, many of our vulnerable students, like uh, black students, um, had a high rate of suspensions, and, and special ed students had a high rate, and of course, uh, low socioeconomic students who were marginalized in some of that too. So there were many things that we had to kind of look at considering all the uh, pieces. But, you know, we did persevere through that. You know, I'm, I got excited about that. I said, okay, well, here's some challenges. What are we going to do about it? Mm -hmm. And that prompted, uh, through my 100-day plan, um, I got to go around and speak to many different stakeholders throughout the community, and they got a chance to express what their needs and wants were. And out of that conversation, we realized that we need a plan, a strategic plan. And we tried to look back to the records, and we didn't find a strategic plan for Burlington for decades. We actually didn't find any. So. I'm not sure when the last time was, so we said we need a strategic plan. So we embarked with some really good staff that we had, um, sorry, predates you, <laughs> um, that we put together a plan and we started going to the different community groups, our school groups and students and staff and MPAs and all the different players in the community and developed these big rocks were our goals, right? Sustainable finance facility, equitable climate and culture, and inclusive teaching and learning, and then developed some priorities and developed a plan and gave us a foundation to do that. At the same time, there were lots of work we had to do with our own operations in our central office, and so we were doing some of that work. And um, so we, we've come really far in terms of uh, moving the, uh, the, the goalposts in terms of those areas. Mm -hmm. And we're now at the stage where we are shifting into the next stage, really looking at achievement and how what we've done with achievement and how we close the gap right. and raise the bar. And I'll talk a little bit more about that yeah. as we get into the um, the program a little bit. But uh, it was great to have that reflection. I was like, wow, okay, because sometimes you think you're not getting up the hill at all, right? You're going two steps back. But when you kind of reflect back from where we started, that there has been some considerable gains made. And um, I'm really excited and looking forward to this upcoming year and reflecting back on this past year as well. Yeah, and I don't know when I started my job and I was looking at the strategic plan, um, there were just a wealth of pictures of community members sort of gathered around in their areas, of, you know, whiteboarding and visioning, and you could tell that that was really a ground up uh, effort, that there was a lot of community engagement around those process, and I think sometimes we forget that we do have, you know, not only a strategic plan, but there wasn't a clear mission for the district at that time either. Uh, absolutely, and I'm glad you brought that up because one of the things that 
um, give us the ability to do. One, we targeted some specific groups that we weren't seeing coming out, like we weren't seeing uh, our special ed uh, community coming out, and partly because they were busy with their kids um, to, to leave them at home, and we weren't seeing newcomer families come out, so we had special events just for those groups. And um, through that process, the board at the time um, felt that there was a good groundswell that we actually revised our whole mission, vision, um, and belief statements and developed a new logo for the board and said, okay, now we can move forward because now we've heard from the community thousands and thousands of data points and input from people, and this is what our community believes in and wants to support, and this is what we, 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 we this is our vision forward. Mm -hmm. We should probably note that if you haven't read the district's mission, vision, and beliefs, you can find those on the website. It's www.bsdvt.org. And uh, as the superintendent mentioned, those were all um, things that were supported by the board, so you will find that on the school commissioner's page on our website. So. Thank you. So you had, um, you, you were talking about setting the strategic plan into place and then sort of shifting gears and looking at some of those other foundational pieces um, that needed to be done after that. So what would be some examples of, of the work that was sort of had to be done at the same time as you were doing the strategic plan, but after that was done was the stuff that you really needed to focus on? What are some of those things that you're happier in place at this time? Yeah, well, one of the things was, uh, was instrumental, first foremost, was the restructuring of our um, finance department. Mm. So we have a new we had a new finance director just started who's who's great Nathan Lavery is exceptional um, and had some experience at the state level so came in and knew exactly what needed to be done in terms of legislation and um, and aligning with our work and incidentally we had just been separated from the city because there were so many inconsistencies that the agency of education stepped in and said Burlington you need to be separate and we need to hold accountable um, your sort of budget lines and so your your fin the, the finances in the district were separated from the city mm -hmm. and that was um, at the same time we had deficits uh, in the district and we saw that manifested in a couple of failed budget votes if my memory serves me well yeah absolutely absolutely yeah. so that was critical to building that team and uh, we quickly went to hiring some new staff that there were that need to be in that department and looking at um, restructuring how we do things and starting to introduce technology, right? In this day and age, we should be able to, at a click of a button, ask for a report. You know, I was asking for reports, the, the board was asking for reports, and community members were asking for reports, and we couldn't deliver on it hmm. because we just didn't have the infrastructure. And so we've spent the last few years trying to get that, and then, of course, training that happens, and we're now in the process of finalizing some of that software and being able to do that. But coincidentally, at the same time, the Agency of Education is also relining their uh, financial software, so we're still working with that, but we're in a good shape right now in terms of the staff. We have the confidence in them and their understanding of what needs to happen mm -hmm. to move forward. Um, so that was foundational to, yep. uh, to move forward. I remember talking with you um, about when you stepped into the role, you were aware that it, there were many campuses, but I'm not sure that you were quite so aware of the shape that some of those campuses were in. Um, and you want to talk a little bit about those foundational pieces? Yeah, well, you know, the um, in, in walking around, you know, you, you kind of do the site visits, look at the, the buildings, and um, you look at it from a perspective, would you want your child in this, in these settings? And there were some places that were um, really hard to look at in terms of the needs, but there were some high safety issues. I mean, we had uh, panels at the, uh, at the high school level that didn't uh, comply with the 911 standards. Right. So, you know, we, we can do that. We had, you know, some of our elementary schools down at the boilers, there were uh, safety hazards. It could, you know, blow up and destroy, and, and students were being housed there because of space during, during it. So we had to respond, and it was really difficult because where do we put them? Right. Right? And there were some challenges around that. But so with our property services director and um, other staff, we started uh, working with consultants and developed a 10-year capital plan. Mm -hmm to look at all of our schools, you know, all the crumbling sites, all the holes in the patch, and then all the big infrastructure pieces. And the one critical thing that came through that was a kind of a consistent theme was, was the issue of accessibility. Yeah. You know, our buildings have been up for uh, you know, decades, and back in those days, accessibility wasn't a prime point in terms of building the buildings, but mm -hmm. nowadays, uh, we definitely need them. And some of our designs, like look at our high schools, it's really designed for like a California style, like you go outside and you come back in. And we've enclosed those, and you can't do that. You, you can't even get up there if you're um, if you're not fully able-bodied in in any way. So we developed this 10-year capital plan, and we presented the plan, went to the community, and the community supported it. 
Um, so that's been great. So now we're in the implementation of repairing some of the, uh, all of our buildings step by step. And if people have been driving up and down Main Street all summer, they can see the work that's happening at Edmonds. Mm -hmm. It looks like a construction site. It is a construction site. But there's some beautiful things that's happened there thus, thus far, and our students are going to be able to enter the year and receive that, you know, that gift from our community. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, and once that project is done, I hope the community will be able to join us. We're going to try to show off the, um, if you haven't had a chance to check out the cafeteria at Edmonds that's been totally redone. They basically converted a space that they called the dungeon that nobody even wanted to go down into. Now it's beautiful, it's modern, natural light. Um, you can tell that like kids, they're not going to want to leave the lunchroom. They're going to want to just stay in that right, area. But they so. do have to get to class. But they have so. to get to so. class on time. Um, <laughs> So were there some other foundational pieces uh, that you have in place now that you think the district is going? We talked a little bit about finances, about a capital plan. Um, obviously, what we didn't touch on is that we also passed in November the largest bond in state history for a school renovation project. So that another piece of the puzzle of really having spaces for our children to be able to learn. Mm -hmm. um, what are some of those other pieces? Um, well, one, one of the things that, you know, you, you talk about the academic achievement, that's prime and most important for an educational organization, but you can't uh, build a house without a foundation. And sometimes it's hard to communicate that to the community or people in terms of, okay, well, we're trying to do this. We need to work on the capacity building, but these foundational things have to happen. And so simultaneously, we've been working on um, what's called the achievement gap. So closing the achievement gap and raising the bar. And one of the first things we have to do is educate uh, both our board and our staff around what the achievement gap and the opportunity gap it's often called, um, what it is and what the data says and what is your role uh, as an educational leader in our schools and what are the students' roles. And once you've gotten that, then to put a structure in place. So we've been working on developing a structure where we have uh, instructional coaches, we, ha we have um, um, interventionists for classroom uh, pieces. So those are all sort of foundational pieces for the achievement piece. And now we're just shifting into, okay, how do we implement so we can and collect the right data that we need to, um, to move forward. The other thing I would say is, you know, I mentioned the word data. One of the challenges we had in Burlington, First Drive, is around the ability of our data, mm -hmm. right? So if I, when I ask for data from our staff, I might get three different responses because people ask, collect it differently. And mm -hmm. we say, well, we need to have one. And if you look at the agency compared to ours, it'd be a different way of doing it, right? And so we've worked on how to um, be consistent in terms of what is the truth, what's the authentic data that we need to use, and how do we use that to monitor our progress. So once you have that foundational piece, then you can actually put in strategies that you can validate and say, yeah, that strategy worked because we knew that we started from here and we'd be able to move forward in, into that. Without that, you can't. You're just throwing initiatives, and that's what we were doing. We were just saying, hey, let's do this initiative, let's do this initiative, but you can't measure if you're having any success or not. So I know sometimes everyone wants it to happen quickly, but you have to take a step back before you can move forward a lot quicker. Mm -hmm. And now we have people in those roles for the first time, actually, who are actually in charge of making sure that we're using the right data, and but also educating our building leaders and the other principals to say, like, this is the data we're using and this is why. And not only that, but let me show you how to get the data and, and how to use it. And we have an achievement gap lead for the first time. And yep. I think um, what is really interesting about those positions is those were positions that were sort of lots of people were sort of chipping in to do, but it kept coming back of, is it was we actually need someone to, to champion to, to champion this, to, champion, to own yeah. this work. And right. that came I out mean, of yep. committee meetings and systems leaders meetings and so finally have those pieces in place. Right. I mean, we're all accountable for achievement of our students, but we need someone to be responsible for the lead right. of it to drive us all. So I'm glad we're there. And, and I'll share some of that in our, in our slides. Yeah. Where you review, you'll see some of the successes thus far already yeah. as we uh, move forward. Well, why don't we do that? Why don't we, we've talked a little bit about the last four years. Let's talk about some of the things that happened last year that you're okay. particularly excited about. All right, then we'll talk about this year. Then we'll talk about this year. Okay. Why not? Okay, so one of the things I wanted to kind of uh, share last year is that we have our what I call our big rocks inclusive teaching and learning equitable climate and culture sustainable finance and facilities those when are you say big rocks right uh, you're, you're talking about the biggest pieces of the strategic plan for our district right? right those are the goal areas these are our major goals so this is what came out of our community consultations that we had all kinds of feedback and they fell into these buckets 
around equity climate and cost. People talked about those topics. People talked about topics around finance and facilities. People talked about topics around teaching and learning. And we were able to consolidate them and put them in the bucket and then try to define priorities. One thing that was pleasant for us is that the uh, Agency of Education was at the same time developing their priorities mm -hmm. and download that to um, districts and say, report back to us on these things. And we we're like, oh my goodness, it's going to be totally different from right. what we're doing. And then we're not, we're going to have multiple priorities and not be able to meet them. But as you can see from our chart here, they line up quite well. Yeah. Um, so the academic proficiency on the left hand corner there and high quality staffing, that really aligns well with our inclusive teaching and learning um, and the work that we've done thus far. Safe, healthy schools lines up well with our equitable climate and culture. And investment in priorities. I was really impressed they had that because that's what we were doing, investment in priorities. Now we just need them to kind of pass some legislation that will give us some funding for, <laughs> for some buildings. So hopefully uh, uh, there's some legislators out there listening and uh, we'll uh, take that into their, their next session as, as a conversation piece. Yeah, that'd be great. I'm going to skip that. So I'm going to kind of share um, some highlights and just – so people know that I'm going to kind of zoom through really quickly. Mm -hmm. And you can go onto our website if you want to kind of uh, view these in more detail. Mm -hmm. But uh, just for the interest of time, I'm just going to kind of go through them really quick, and then people can go and search and look at them. Uh, yep. It's on the home page, www.bsdvt.org. Right. And I'm going towards, uh, I'm, I'm going to share the information in the uh, buckets of the inclusive teaching and learning and the, and the three goal areas. So these are things that happened that support the strategic plan in the last year that you're really excited about? Absolutely. So here's a program that um, people aren't quite familiar with is around exp expanded learning. Mm -hmm. and expanded learning is a continuation of our programming throughout the day. And those of you who, parents out there who access after school programs and summer programs, that's all part of our expanded learning initiative. And you can see from the slides there, just a tremendous success in terms of um, the amount of students that we serve, 1,600 students, that's bigger than many uh, districts in the state in right. terms of just the, the extra um, Just support, the extra programming. Just the extra programming. Right. And uh, the great satisfaction rate from, from parents in terms of um, the utilization of those programs. And there's lots of initiatives and things that we've won uh, na nationwide and uh, statewide in terms of uh, expanded learning. But it is an integral part of learning for our students. And one of the things I really like about the program, it, it, it gives an opportunity for those students who may not have the same kind of um, curricular or social emotional support at home, but they get that in the programming. Mm -hmm. They come there and they get those resources and they also get nutrition, they get food as well right. too. So that's, uh, that's a bonus. And one of the things that I like as well is, it, is for some of those students who might not have the resources to explore different things. Like I know one of the things they do is partner with UVM to do bird watching. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's an opportunity that not everybody has to do at home. It's a simple thing, but you need expensive equipment to do. You need the time to do. You need the supervision and the knowledge to do it. So just these different opportunities that students have to really come together as one and not see social e economic barriers. Right. And you said it, especially for parents who are working really hard and have one or two jobs, time is, is of the essence. Right. Like, what do you, you know, time to and go a, and do bird And a 99% satisfaction rate for parents, and we're both parents, how, right. how easy is it to keep us happy? Exactly, right? Um, I want to touch on this program a little bit, Parent University. This is the fourth year we've had uh, this initiative, and it came out initiated by one of our staff members, and it's kind of really grown and this targeted uh, parents. And we know from our research that when parents are engaged in their own learning and in school in some way, it has a significant impact on their students. And this program has successfully graduated um, tens of parents every year. And uniquely, it's um, really drawn the attraction of our newcomer parents. Mm -hmm. And it's good to see people with limited English, um, new to the country, wanting to learn about skills that are gonna make them better parents and also better learners. And that's great modeling. For, um, for their children. Um, I wish they had one of these programs for my parents. Because, <laughs> right. you know, we serve as a surrogate translators and all the other places when you're a newcomer or you're an immigrant. And you're, but um, I can see the, uh, the positives that happen for, for our kids in our schools just by what their parents are able to access and do. Mm. Um, this is a good slide. I'm going to let you talk about this because I know you're excited about this, Russ, because a couple of years ago we changed our website and then we started getting into how we change communication 
online and, and the other metrics that we use. If you want to give a quick highlight on this slide here. Sure, you know, we're really focusing on trying to get the messaging out every way that we possibly can. We know that it's a big district and there's a lot going on, so we've seen uh, enormous growth in our term in terms of our social media usage um, and trying new strategies around YouTube, uh, and but also making sure that we're communicating with the press those good stories that are happening. Um, there's nothing better than watching uh, the press come in and film third graders who are planting trees. The kids are excited, the reporters are excited, and the parents and the community knows like we're doing really great work. So we're going to continue. Um, we'll talk a little bit about the community engagement plan, but we're going to continue to try to be uh, as transparent and open and can communicate as much as we possibly can. Um, and we're certainly open to continued feedback around that process. Okay. I'm going to pick up the pace a little bit because then we've got a lot of content and little time. But um, you can go onto the site once again. And there's some uh, opportunities here that we sort of shared around improved student supports. You know, part of our budget was around um, initiatives and supports around students' social and emotional well-being and also their interaction and engagement. So you can go on and read all these uh, engaging activities that have happened um, in, in all our different schools um, throughout the course of the year. Um, but I do want to talk a little bit about early ed. Yeah. Uh, we know from the research that every dollar we spend at the early end is like $10 at the top end. And we've got a great early education program. We have a wait list every year and we're working on a plan mm -hmm. to try five to- Five star every year. Five star every year and we're trying to work on a plan to accommodate more students. And I know parents will be happy to, to hear that. And we've got a great director of early ed that's leading the team there. And um, we hope that we'll have some opportunities um, in the near future to expand those programs. Um, but you can see the smiling faces in these, in these graphics here. Um, we're fortunate enough to, to work in a building that there's a program right in our building, so we get to see them every day. So whenever, you know, I'm having a, a bad day with the big people, <laughs> I go to the little people and, and they, uh, they, they set me straight in terms of what the expectations are. Uh, Burlington Technical Center, this is, I'm going to say it again, this is the best kept secret in Burlington, our tech center. We've got an aviation program. Many people don't know we have an aviation, aviation program. We've got... Um, airplanes and helicopters and our students are getting um, they're learning the skills to go out and work right away we get mm -hmm. companies calling our instructors saying do you have anyone that can do this job and mm -hmm. we don't have enough students to supply them so if you're out there and you have a, a young person uh, male female uh, that's interested in um, aviation or tech please look into right. the Burlington Technical Center because there's many opportunities for employment uh, out there, and it's not only. Um, I know sometimes people, when they hear the word tech, they think it's low level, mm -hmm. but no, we're talking the the whole range, right? We have right. many of our students who've gone on to uh, nursing and medical schools that right. taken programs there. There's all kinds of great programming there, so right. take the opportunity and. Uh, it really has changed. You know, we have a. a even an early, early education program there where students are really learning firsthand what it's like if you wanted to be involved in preschool, how do you grow. In our automotive, we just had a student win an award from the Vermont Automobile Enthusiasts. You know, where the students are doing really great work. Yeah, we could talk on and on about that. And here's a highlight of some of our students. You know, I've mentioned, I've said this phrase quite a few times, closing the gap and raising the bar. And sometimes people quite don't understand what, what we mean by that. So when we talk about the achievement gap or the opportunity gap, those are the students who are not meeting whatever the standard is, right? And often they're um, traditionally marginalized kids, like you see low socioeconomic kids in there. You see um, uh, students of different uh, non-white students in there. You see special ed students in there. And you, you get other kids in there as well too, but whatever the, the grouping is, we want to close that gap to the top. At the same time, we want to raise the bar. Right. So that means we want to raise the bar for everyone. We want the standard to be high. The standard shouldn't be the top kid. The t standard should be up here, the mm -hmm. international standard, to, right. because you know if you look at the metrics across um, the world um, in America, we're not at the top. There are countries way at the top. So I'm saying that we you know we need to raise everyone's standards. So you'd want your child to be above, right? right. We not, all want not to be just better. at the gap, right. right? Right. So you can see many of these students in this next couple of uh, graphics are definitely raising the bar right. in some perspective or not. And um, the one comment I'll make is that we've had some national. Um, academic award winners out of Burlington in the last uh, three or four years, Presiden presidential scholars and Rhodes scholars. And um, I remember the one particular year, there were, I think there were six or seven Rhodes, uh, presidential scholars throughout the country. 
and uh, three of them were from Burlington. How amazing is that? It, it's incredible things that our students are accomplishing. And the, um, on the next slide, there's a student um, who is chosen as the, the student ambassador for all of the North, Northeast in terms of poetry. So we're doing things that, you know, the arts are a big thing in Burlington. Um, so we're doing the presidential scholars and we have people um, who... The spectrum. The, the whole, the whole the spectrum. spectrum. Yeah. And the tech center, again, the, the first uh, tech, technical center in the state to do resale. Uh, to do wholesale, sorry, you know, selling brownies that they are making, they're doing the marketing plans, and then their products are in uh, healthy right. living, so. Yep. And uh, uh, so this is uh, um, early learning, um, English, 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 lang learning English, yeah. English language learning. Yep. That happens early, early as well. <laughs> and we've been really working on how do we connect uh, with that particular stakeholder group to support mm -hmm. them, to support our students. Um, and there's so multiple strategies around how to do that. And um, uh, last year, we engaged in a partner to develop an app that um, gives us an opportunity to survey in a different way. Right. Because, you know, we do a lot of surveys in education. So right. I know parents out there, you love surveys when we send you surveys. Tell us how we're but, doing. Uh, <laughs> tell us what you <laughs> need. You, right. But that's right. hard to communicate if uh, English is not your first language. Right. You don't know what it is. So this app helped to do the translation. Um, gives the opportunity for um, our parents to also communicate and also contribute right. to that collective uh, yeah. services. So we'll look at more innovation around around this yeah. area as we move forward. Yeah. And again, those Burlington Technical Center students stepping up and leading the way and giving our English learners a chance to participate yeah. in a meaningful way in those surveys. So we did take time this year to look back and reflect on uh, the many staff accomplishments that we have. I mean, there's so many mm -hmm. that we just picked out a few that we can mm -hmm. highlight. And people can go and look at that. We got a range from national principals of the years to um, substitute teachers of years and all kinds of other uh, accomplishments that have happened throughout the year. So, uh, and I, I did want to talk about this, just innovation a little bit. And some of you may have engaged with this group, City and Lake Semester Program. This was an innovative program. And this was great, because this was really grassroots. It really actually initially started from uh, a couple of community members. Mm -hmm. which connected with some staff and they came to myself and our exec council and said, we, we got this idea, we want to do this, we want to do this. And I said, no, <laughs> you can't do that because of A, B, and C. Right. They went back, did some work, did some research, came back with some proposals and actually some grants and, and we, we couldn't say no. Right. It was a yes because we've, we had done, all a, the, B, and we've C. done A, B, and C and had all the elements for uh, a great pilot and we were able to uh, support it. And now it's, it's really... Um, demonstrated that um, students do need multiple avenues for learning and when I got to go to the end of the year session and hear some of those students speak and I asked them you know what's the difference between your classrooms where you were in and this semester you've been outside because they do the work within the city of Burlington mm -hmm. they go to different they go to the city hall they go to different places and they they're talk, out on the lake they're on the lake they're, they're everywhere Shelburne right? Farms, so, right yep so they talked about the different style of learning. And this was a range of kids too, right? Mm -hmm. We're not talking about kids who've always struggled in school. Those kids were there, but also the high performing kids were there too. And they all had commentary on how this has accelerated their ability to see learning in a different way and use their critical thinking skills. And many of them found different pathways to careers because mm -hmm. of the exposure they had with different community members. So that's pretty exciting. Right. Um, so a number of innovative uh, projects that are happening. Um, I won't spend too much time, and we've talked a bit about Achievement Gap, but this is just a representative of the, uh, the team that we're putting together. Yep. Right? We've got a data systems coordinator and an Achievement Gap lead to actually have those champions and say, this is your role. You need to lead us and push us to make sure that all our kids are at a certain level and beyond as we move forward. So look forward to that as we um, continue to roll that out this year. And I thought this was kind of cute. I want to put this graphic in here. Here's a a group of uh, educators together. We've got an interventionist, an instructional leader that's in here, and they've got a little cake. See the cake there with the uh, data walls? So oh, they, yeah. They, they use a lot of data to sort of formative assessment to see what influence they need to change their practice. And I really like cake, yeah. so that's why I wanted to put this no, one up here. No, <laughs> no, the reason I really like that graphic is the story behind that cake was actually those teachers, and those instructors, um, interventionists, they presented that cake to Karen to say thank you for coming to help teach us about Karen data walls, data systems and she's a new person there. So right. it's really about, you know, you can see the staff buy-in, that this is something we've needed for a long time, and they're grateful to have this resource at their right. fingertips. Excellent. So I'll move on through the achievement stuff we've talked about. And then lastly, the 
sustainable finance and facilities. We've talked about this, and we just want to take this opportunity to thank Burlington, thank you, Burlington once more for not just for this class coming up and for generations, 50 yeah. years, we'll be able to receive a new facility that has the maker spaces and the uh, science labs that are designed for you know 21st century and um, all the online learning that can happen within the building mm -hmm. nowadays. So thank you for that. And a couple of shots of some of the capital plan work, some work that's happening mm -hmm. in all our schools. And many people have been driving down Main Street. You've seen the Edmonds building that's happening. And I think yep. this is the graphic of Edmonds right here. So this, is the, this, this uh, cafeteria is what you were talking about earlier, mm -hmm. um, Russ, around the dungeon. This was a dungeon. <laughs> We didn't hold that's, kids there, but that's what the kids called it, the dungeon, because that's where they went for activities, and it was kind of clammy. Yep. Um, but now it's a nice facility for uh, cafeteria, and even our food services staff we really appreciate it, because that it. cafeteria is brand new ovens and fridges and ventilations, and you can see the receiving area is, is really, really nice as well, too. So, um, And uh, as we look back, um, we're thankful for the budget pass again, at, um, and uh, this was the fifth straight year right. that we passed the budget, and it was overwhelming support from the community. Um, and that's incredible that uh, the, the community understands that education is a, is a huge investment, yep. and it comes back. To One thing that I did want to make sure that we reminded people is, uh, as part of our commitment to really delivering on the high school in the way that we said that we were going to do. We have public meetings every month, um, so we invite you to join us on the third Thursday at Burlington High School in the cafeteria. It's a great opportunity to see why we need a new high school when you come on into that cafeteria and have that meeting, but um, you'll meet with the Building Construction Oversight Committee and um, they have updates every month where we are, what's going on, you have an opportunity to weigh in uh, and be heard. So third Thursday of every month at Burlington High School. Uh, Burlington School Pro Food Project, we've talked a little bit about the social, social justice and social action that happens within our schools and through food projects that donate, you know, uh, food to uh, people who need it maybe more than we do. We have a, a staff access. who's just committed to making sure that our kids have healthy food uh, in their bodies. Uh, and that's, that's their passion. And they're always finding ways to make sure that the students right. who can't uh, who may not have the resources uh, are fed, but even students who have the resources what make was that? sure. There used to be a cartoon on, I, you know, I used to watch is you are what you eat, <laughs> and you need that foundation in order to, uh, to learn, yeah. right? So, great. And then lastly, Equal Climate Culture. And the only thing I'll talk about this is people have heard about maybe RP, and RP stands for Restorative Practices, and we're a Restorative Practices um, District. Mm -hmm. And so you'll see communications about Restorative Practices, and Restorative Practices for us, is really a, a holistic view on how we communicate and work together and problem solve and critically think for our students and our staff. And uh, many um, parents, you might know that um, some of your teachers, they start their classes always with a, re a restorative, practice, restorative circle. Mm -hmm. And students get an opportunity to, to so talk about social emotional things and set the stage for learning. And it's right. been very successful um, thus far. And our staff are really engaged. And I just attended this summer uh, the summer, the retreat that we had this summer around uh, restorative practices and training for our next group of staff that are they're coming in. So excited about right. that, and we're hoping to engage the uh, the city yeah. to become a restorative practice city. Yeah. So we're all kind of be on the same. Um, yep. and, and when you say we're a restorative practices district, and what that means is we are a district who's committed to using restorative practices uh, as a way to build relationships, as a way to make sure that students can be kept in their classrooms and in. Uh, attached to their education as much as possible, but we should also say it's work in progress. You know, this isn't just a, an, an initiative. Uh, this is three years in now, um, and it's taken some time. The buy-in, you can see each year the buy-in gets a little bit more and more, and um, I know one thing that we were happy about last year is we can now say that we have uh, people practicing. We have leadership teams in each of our buildings, including um, in central office, and so even talking about how adults use this together as we try to be the model for the students. Yeah, I mean, uh, this work, all this work is ongoing. Yeah. But it never stops, right? It's like, okay, you get to this level, doesn't mean you're there. Mm -hmm. You continue to develop it and develop your expertise to a, a certain level in terms of understanding. So we'll continue to work on that. Um, a number of initiatives around uh, social dust, justice and social action. Um, this is a really cool one. Many of our, our schools do their 
reading to end racism, and they invite um, all kinds of people to come in to, and read. And I see a funny face there. I see you, Russ, in there <laughs> in, a, in a classroom reading to some students. And that that's was great. one of my favorite days last year, yeah. just to engage with the students and talk about, you know, we're all in this together. And um, really an opportunity for central office staff to come into the classroom and just get a, a reminder of what it's like to be in the classroom with those kids and, right. and connect. So. And uh, once again, we had the opportunity to have our second annual Black History, Beyond Black Beyond History, Black History Beyond, Month. Beyond Black History Month. Yeah. You know, we're really emphasizing that Black History, it's not just in February, it's all year. So we, we're advocating inclusive curriculum where you teach about history, you're teaching about all people's histories at the same time. So we've been working on that and we get a chance to showcase some of that on this night. And you can see from the graphic there that is a great turnout from the community in the right hand corner there, like a lot, everyone comes out uh, we do give them free food as well, too. So <laughs> we feed them, uh, um, and we, we're really trying to use that night to celebrate um, and, and to learn. And we're trying to do, next, this year we've already got the date set, so mark your calendars, March 23rd. I'm telling you about it now so you don't have an excuse. You can't get your hair done on that day. <laughs> uh, but I was planning to. It's, but it's, have it's, to it's the real that. opportunity uh, to come together. We're looking to do some workshops, maybe even some restorative practices workshops. Um, and just talk about what does it mean to have an equitable climate and culture and how do we um, make sure that um, black history and really the histories of all people are celebrated throughout the year in an inclusive uh, way in our curriculum. So okay. join us. Great. Uh, student engagement is, is primal in terms of reading student success. A number of uh, graphics here that just illustrates how our students are engaging not just with each other but also with our staff and on different levels whether if it's through media or in the classroom as well too. Um, and talk about engaging. This is um, a graphic of a news story that came out around our gender neutral locker rooms. And, you know, sometimes, you know, we have to go through some of these challenges in terms of to find true success. And this was a great opportunity for us to demonstrate uh, what we really believe in mm -hmm. and what we value. And so we were able to uh, move forward in developing new gender neutral bathrooms in our in our schools so um, we can accommodate all students. Right. Um, so that was great to have the, the students who were involved profiled in this particular situation and to get the word out that you know we're a welcoming community mm -hmm. and come and we will uh, do our best to, uh, to to make sure that you feel comfortable. Absolutely we're listening and, and we're trying hard and mm -hmm. we appreciate that student participating with us and sharing the story and it was a great day. Good word appreciation because we this graphic looks back at Teacher Appreciation Week back in May and uh, this year we really focus on growth going forward so hence the uh, the plants and the uh, the plants and the flowers nice here tie -in. and um, <laughs> and I think the, the, our staff really appreciate the opportunity and hopefully it's still growing in their backyards yeah. or in their houses and they'll be able to reflect on that as the year goes on right. this year. One thing that I appreciated is that the district took the opportunity to have teacher appreciation week and send out some really positive messages around that um, but then there was this all those plants that you saw that were actually delivered to all of the staff in the district and I remember um, everyone just felt like surprised like oh I get a plant too uh, and I'm right. important too and so right. that was a, I think a great way to honor right. everybody who works in our district. So. Yeah absolutely I think the you know the educational team is inclusive of not just the classroom teacher but right. all the other people who right. it's the paras, have the, paras the administrative office staff the nurses the all the people who uh, contribute to that, and we, and we can't forget that, right? Right. So I'm going to end right there, and, yeah. and uh, end with our tagline there. We're, like, we're still tr striving to cultivate and care and creative and courageous people, but we need people to join the journey. Join the journey. Know, and that's what we're going to talk about now, yeah. just how, how do we engage that's a great segue. to join the journey, yeah. So we looked at the last uh, four years, and we looked at uh, specifically last year, and Having some of those pieces and parts in, in place, you saw we have the RP work, we have the data people, uh, we have a, a plan for our buildings, and, and you also have people championing those causes. So it's not all coming back on the superintendent's desk um, to say, how, how are we going to fix this? What's the plan for moving forward for this? Um, so you have those structures in place, not that you're going to disengage from those people, but you have people leading them. So what about this year? What are you excited about this year? I am really excited, you know, because I've been practicing what's called a uh, theoretical framework called gradual release. So you talk about all those things, the structural things, like they were really tight in the superintendent's office. And now we have really highly competent people with plans to go forward. I can gradually release them to go ahead and do their thing and trust that they're going to operate it. So that frees up my time 
to the, to the other piece. And one of the pieces they're identified that I need to do more of is around the engagement mm -hmm. of our students, our staff, and our community to revisit, you know, where are we right now and what are our needs from our um, staff and students and our, and our stakeholders to look at the next step. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to be looking at opportunities to go to the traditional spaces like the MPAs and city council and uh, PTOs mm -hmm. and uh, also looking at engaging our community supporters, right? So mm -hmm. some of the um, organizations that support youth mm -hmm. in the community, but, in, but also in particular equity seeking groups mm -hmm. that uh, may have something to share or something to uh, collaborate on in terms of working with our students and move forward. So looking for those opportunities. And um, one of the things I've committed myself to, to this year is have a, a more strategic um, approach to classroom visits. Mm -hmm. You know, traditionally, uh, I do visits every week, and I have on my calendar to go on Mondays. And what usually happens is something happens, and the visit is not as fruitful as I would like it to mm -hmm. be or not. But now, we're, I think we have enough flexibility now that we can strategically um, have teachers maybe invite me in to see mm -hmm. some particular lessons and strategies that's connected to what our major goals are. And that'll be great for me to see the results of that, you know, because sometimes you don't get to see the end results to, you know, a certain period of time. So we're inviting our, our teachers to communicate through you and through me mm -hmm. to set up those opportunities, but also um, our parent communities. There might be some events that they might like to have me at yeah. to, so I can see and and, uh, and support as well too. And uh, there are many causes in Burlington that I would love to be able to lend my time or energy or even my voice to right. that um, I haven't had the, the time to do and looking forward to um, have those opportunities. So um, now I'll so. say that, <laughs> right? right? Because I know when you end invitation, you get a flurry. Mm -hmm. uh, so people need to understand that, you know, I, I won't be able to meet everyone's needs right away and I won't be able to be able to get out to every single thing but at least um, I'll be able to uh, um, lend myself more yeah than in the past. make an effort to be really make sure that people know that you're engaged at, uh, throughout the next year um, really learning from the community as I understand it and um, and and what I've appreciated about this process is sitting down and, and being able to thoughtfully think through some of those equity seeking groups and also some of those parent groups and I know that we've we basically wrote down like these are the 30 or 40 people that we want to make sure that we are meeting with this year but I know that we didn't get everybody and so there's really an opportunity we, you've already set up some of those meetings I know that you've um, have meetings with the LGBTQ community leaders uh, in the area and um, we've already been presenting and uh, visiting NPAs um, but but those slots aren't all filled yeah. um, and, and we would love to hear those recommendations so how should someone say if they're a teacher please come into my classroom or if they're a community member that says, hey, there's this event going on, what should they do? Well, one thing they can do, one, they can always go to our website and go, you can go to the superintendent uh, um, page or you can go right on the website, but you can also email to the superintendent email, which is BSD superintendent at BSD. Superintendent. Just superintendent. superintendent. And you Who are you looking it. for? You're looking for the superintendent, superintendent. at bsdvt.org. Um, and I know that... Um, make every effort to respond to every email that gets sent um, from community members. I remember when I started my job, um, you were very big on if someone sends us an email, we're making sure that this office is responding to their needs um, or connecting them with the, the, the appropriate person. So, right. so we're looking forward to that and um, hopefully people will um, invite me. And, hopefully uh, I'll invite you and join the journey. Join the journey. <laughs> That's what it's all about. Thank you. So. I guess we should say thank you, everyone, thank for your you. time. Goodbye. See um, you out there. We hope to see you out there. <laughs> thank, thank you, you. Russ.